CTV is a Canadian English language terrestrial television network. The channel was launched on October 1st, 1961, and was founded by Spence Codwell, and to this very day, the channel is still alive and healthy. So, how did it become so popular? Let's find out. Formation. In 1958, Prime Minister John Diefenbaker's government passed the Broadcasting Act, which established the Board of Broadcast Governors, forerunner to the Canadian Radio Television and Telecommunications Commission, or CRTC, as the governing body of Canadian Broadcasting, effectively ending the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, CBC, dual role as a regulator and broadcaster. The new board's first act was to take applications for second television stations in Halifax, Montreal, in both English and French, Ottawa, Toronto, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver in response to an outcry for an alternative to the CBC's television service. Calgary and Edmonton were served by privately owned CBC affiliates. The other six markets by CBC owned and operated stations, O and O's, the nine winners, in order of their first sign on were CFCM TV Calgary on September 9th, 1960, CHAN TV Vancouver on October 31st, 1960, CJAY TV Winnipeg on November 12th, 1960, CFTO TV Toronto on December 31st, 1960, CJCH TV Halifax on January 1st, 1961. CFCF TV Montreal English on January 20th, 1961. CFTM TV Montreal French on February 19th, 1961. CJOH TV Ottawa on March 12th, 1961. And CBXT Edmonton on October 1st, 1961. The first eight stations were privately owned. The Edmonton station was a CBC O and O, thus CFRN TV, the existing local station, would lose its CBC affiliation once CBXT signed on. Even before his station was licensed, John Bassett, the chief executive of the ultimately successful Toronto applicant Baton Aldred Rogers Broadcasting, had expressed interest in participating in the curation of a second television network of which we see the Toronto station as an anchor. Indeed, Baton had already begun quietly contracting the successful applicants in other cities to gauge their interest in forming a cooperative group to share Canadian programming among the stations. This led to the July 1960 formation of the Independent Television Organization ITO, consisting of the eight newly licensed private stations and CFRN each having one vote in the ITO's operations regardless of the size of its audience, CFTM being a, being a French language station and therefore having little reason to collaborate with the other stations, would soon withdraw from the group. It would later emerge as the flagship of the first private French language network, TVA. The ITO soon resolved to apply for a network license to link these second stations. However, the ITO op opposition from Spence Codwell, a former CBC executive and one of the unsuccessful applicants for the Toronto license who had first approached the BBG in April 1960 to pitch a second station network proposal of his own. Under his plan, at least 51% of the shares of the network would be owned by various prominent Bay Street investors who had previously backed his Toronto station bid. Only 49% would, would be reserved for the network's affiliates to purchase, if they wished. The BBG, and particularly its chair, Andrew Stewart, who at the time also served as the president of the University of Alberta, was not in favor of a station-owned network, fearing that any such network would be dominated by Toronto's CFTO, Although it did not immediately approve Codwell's proposal, it soon set several conditions on such a network that effectively made Codwell's group the only feasible applicant. That fall, the Codwell group now named the Canadian Television Network, or CTN, and the ITO faced off in a series of meetings with the BBG. The ITO decided not to follow through with a formal network application, but the stations particularly Baton, which said it had no interest in participating in CTN and believed it could still be successful without one. 
continue to indicate various concerns with viability of Codwell's proposal. Ultimately, the BBG granted a license to CTN conditional on securing the affiliation of six of the eight ITO stations. Baton's opposition to the CTN reversed in early 1961, soon after CFTO won the broadcast rights to the Canadian Football League Eastern Conference for the 1961 and 1962 seasons. Baton's original plan was to operate a temporary network to distribute the games incorporating CFTO, other independent stations, and CBC affiliates in smaller markets, assuming the public network released its affiliates to carry the game. Although the plan was neither officially rejected or approved, various uncertainties eventually led John Bassett to decide to sign an affiliation agreement with CTN instead to ensure the games would air. Most of the other second stations followed suit, with the exception of CHAN in Vancouver, which agreed to carry several network programs but never officially signed on as an affiliate for the duration of the Codwell era, yet nonetheless would later claim to have been a charter member of the network. Early Years The network finally launched as the CTV Television Network on October 1st, 1961. The CBC had objected to the network's initial name, apparently claiming it had exclusive rights to the term Canadian, and therefore the letter CTV had no official expanded meaning. The CTV network's first night on air began with Harry Rasky's promotional documentary on the new network. That was followed by fall that was followed by a fall season preview program. CTV's initial 1961-1962 season began with the following programs, five of which were Canadian pr productions. The Andy Griffiths Show, Checkmate, Cross Canada Barn Dance, Migrate, The Rifleman, Showdown, Sing Along with Mitch, Take a Chance, a quiz show by Roy Ward Dixon adapted from the radio, Top Cat, 20 Questions, West Coast, and Whiplash. Other series such as Telepol and Akin to Win were introduced later in the inaugural season. At first, flagship CFTO was the only station that carried programming live. During CBC's off hours, CTV used CBC's microwave system to send programming to the rest of the country on tape delay. Eventually, a second microwave channel opened up, enabling live programming from coast to coast. The Codwell-led management team immediately ran into financial troubles, and relations between the network and its stations were not smooth. At, and its stations were not smooth at first, since CTV had essentially been the product of a forced marriage. For example, most of the rights to American programming rested the I, rested with the ITO, not CTV. In many cases, CTV found itself competing with its own stations for the rights to programming, reorganization, and expansion. Codwell's departure in 1965 did little to alleviate the situation, and CTV soon found itself on the verge of bankruptcy. In 1966, the network's affiliates, which by, the, by this time included CJON-TV in St. John's, CKCO-TV in Kitchener, CHAB slash CHRE in Moose Jaw slash Virginia, and the network's first and, and only U.S. affiliate, WNYP-TV in Jamestown, New York, sought permission to buy the network and run it as a cooperative. The BBG was initially skeptical of, this, of the proposal. Since CFTO was by far the largest and richest station, it was more than double the size of the next largest station, Montreal's CFCF-TV. The BBG feared that CFTO would dominate CTV if the stations were allowed to buy the network. To alleviate these concerns, the affiliates promised that each, that each station owner would have one vote regardless of its audience share. The board readily approved the, propo the proposal, and by the start of the 1966-1967 season, the stations owned their network. The network also began broadcasting in color on September 1, 1966. By the mid-1970s, CTV had expanded its footprint across Canada, 
mostly by twin stick arrangements in smaller cities and with CBC affiliates switching to CTV once the CBC opened its own stations or added rebroadcasters of nearby O and O stations. In a unique twist, the original Saskatchewan affiliate CHAB slash CHRE was bought by the CBC in 1969 and eventually changed its calls to CBKT with the Virginia station as its main station, allowing Virginia's original station CKCK-TV to join CTV. Its attempt to expand to the United States ended with Buffalo's three network affiliates threatened legal action, forcing WNYP off the air. CTV made a name for itself in news coverage when it convinced star CBC news anchor Lloyd Robertson to switch networks in 1976. Robertson served as the network's main anchorman until 2011. The network, the network also has the country's longest-running national morning news show, originally titled Canada AM, now called Your Morning Since 2016. Its weekly news magazine series, W5, has been a fixture on the network since 1966, predating the similar American program, 60 Minutes by Two Years. In the 1970s, CTV often bought rights to pop and rock songs to serve as theme music for its programming, rather than commissioning original themes. Most notably, W5 used an instrumental portion of Super Tramp's Fool's Overture, Canada AM used, in a, used an instrumental version of the Moody Blues, Ride My Seesaw, the game show definition used Quincy Jones' Soul Bossa Nova, and the CTV movie used the Keith Mansfield instrumental statement from the KPM Music House Library. For most of its first four decades, CTV did not have what could be considered a main schedule outside of news programming. The differences were enough that Ottawa's CJOH used a rebroadcaster in Cornwall to feed cable systems in Montreal from the early 1980s through the mid-1990s, despite the presence of CFCF. The CJOH rebroadcaster reaches the western portion of the Montreal area. Conflict and Consolidation CTV's cooperative structure Structure regularly led to conflicts between the network's owner affiliates. In particular, the owners of CFCF, CJOH, and especially CHAN felt that Barton Broadcasting, owners of flagship CFTO in Toronto, dominated production of network programming. In the mid 1980s, Baton began a drive to take over CTV by buying as many affiliates as possible. Having already bought CFQC, TV in Saskatoon in 1971, Baton purchased the following stations between 1986 and 1990. 1986. CKCK TV Virginia. CICC TV Yorkton, Saskatchewan. CIPA TV Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. 1988. CJOH TV Ottawa. And 1990. MC TV. CICI TV Sudbury, CKNY TV North Bay, CITO TV Timonins, and Huron Broadcasting, CHBX TV Salute St. Marie in Northern Ontario. One caveat, however, was the one owner, one vote provision of the cooperative's bylaws. Any acquisition of one station by an existing station owner triggered an automatic redistribution of the acquired station shares among the, among the other owners. As a result, even though it owned 11 of CTV's 24 affiliates, Baton still had only one vote out of eight. Around the same time, several CTV owner affiliates were expanding their holdings outside of the network. CHAN owner Western International Communications purchased Cellclerk Communications and Alaricum, which together owned several independent stations in Alberta and Ontario. CHUM Limited, owner of the CTV affiliated ATV system serving the Maritimes already owned independent station City TV in Toronto, and by this point had begun launching national cable channels like Much Music. Even Baton added some stations outside of CTV, 
with the purchase or launch of three independent stations in southwestern Ontario in 1992 and 1993. It also began competing with the network for some program acquisitions in 1992, and in 1994 launched the Baton Broadcast System, BBBS, as a parallel programming branch for both its CTV affiliates and independent stations. After several years of contentious negotiations between the eight remaining owner affiliates, by late 1992, they had reached an agreement to recapitalize the network and provide a path for a single company to eventually take control. The restructuring took effect on, in January 1993, and CTV converted from a cooperative to a corporation. Seven of the owner affiliates invested equally, yielding a 14.3% stake in the network for each. However, Newfoundland Broadcasting, owner of CJON, decided not to invest further and effectively relinquished its vote reducing the number of active voting members to seven. As part of the restructuring, the stations also agreed to reduce the number of hours of network programming, allowing Baton and WIC to program more of their stations' schedules with their own acquisitions. In 1996, Baton acquired CFCN from Rogers Communications. Significantly, Baton also acquired Rogers CTV Vote. It also started a joint venture with Electro Home, owner of CFRN and CKCO. As part of the deal, Baton was allowed to vote Electro Home's shares in addition to its own. The following year, Baton acquired Electro Home's share of the joint venture and separately acquired ATV from CHUM. This gave Baton a 57.2% controlling interest in the network, triggering a put option allowing the remaining affiliates, WIC, which by this time owned both CHAN and CFCF, and Moffat, owned, owner of CKY, to sell their CTV shares to Baton without selling their stations, which they did. Baton was now full owner of, C of the CTV network, and immediately began plastering the CTV brand across its stations, even on non-network programming, and dropped its secondary BBS brand. The company changed its name to CTV Incorporated in 1998, and eventually acquired two of the final three large market stations, CKY and, CC and CFCF. It replaced the third, CHAN. CTV has attracted some controversy in the past because of cutbacks to, to, to its small market stations. In the late 1990s, cuts were made to the news staff and productions at CTV's two small market Saskatchewan stations, CICC-TV in Yorkton and CIPA-TV in Prince Albert. These stations currently simulcast super supper hour and late night news from CKCK and CFQC respectively replacing local interest into new into the newscasts similarly the four maritime stations known collectively as CTV Atlantic then known as ATV and the four northern ontario stations known collectively as the CTV Northern Ontario, then known as MCTV, each had their local news production cut back in the early 2000s to one single centrally produced newscast for each region with, with only brief inserts for, for news of strictly local interest. This was a controversial move in all of the affected communities, especially in Northern Ontario, where MCTV's newscasts were the only locally oriented news programs in those markets. Bell Canada era. In 2000, typical of the ownership consolidation trend at the time, BCE Incorporated acquired CTV, Netstar Communications, and the Globe Mail and and the Globe and Mail newspaper, combining them into a media division known as Bell Globe Media BGM. BGM also subsequently acquired a minority share in the French language network TQS, which broadcasts in Quebec. CTV has legally been a television service in the eyes of the CRTC since 2000, when it allowed its network license to expire. CBC, Radio Canada, TVA, and Aboriginal People's Television Network 
are the only official television networks in Canada, CTV was issued a separate network license in 2001 to continue to provide programming to, CH, to CHFD Thunder Bay, CJ, CJBN Kenora, and CITL Lloyd Minister. CTV lost significant coverage in British Columbia and Newfoundland and Labrador at the beginning of the 21st century, starting with a major television realignment in Vancouver. In 2000, CanWest Global bought the television stations of Western International Communications, which owned long-standing CTV affiliates CHAN in Vancouver and Czech TV in Victoria. A year later, after its CTV contract ran out, CanWest made a CHAN the global owned and operated station for, the, for British Columbia, taking advantage of CHAN's massive network of repeaters that cover 97% of the province. CTV shifted its programming to CIVT TV, an independent station it already owned. Unlike CHAN, CIVT has only one transmitter covering the metropolitan areas of Vancouver and Victoria, and has to rely on cable and satellite to reach the rest of the province. CIVT is either carried on a higher channel number or unavailable altogether in the mountain time zone portion of British Columbia, where CTV relies on CFCNDT or CFRNDT as its main carriers. Meanwhile, in 2002, CJON-TV, known as NTV in St. John's, dropped its 38-year CTV affiliation after the network attempted to alter its affiliation agreement in a way that Newfoundland Broadcasting found unfair. Since joining CTV, CJON had aired the base network schedule essentially for free since CTV paid it for the airtime. The station then bought additional CTV programming and sold all advertising. However, CTV tried to make CJON pay for, for the base schedule as well, with, with no possibility airtime payments. It also increased the fees for additional CTV programming beyond what CJON claimed it could pay. Newfoundland Broadcasting also did not want to continue to carry CTV's national advertising during these programs. At the start of 2002-2003 season, CJON became an independent station and dropped most, of, and dropped most CTV programming except for national newscasts. In exchange, it provides news coverage of Newfoundland and Labrador events to CTV. In recent years, all of CTV's non-news programming has disappeared from the station and since then virtually all primetime programs aired on the station are from Rival Global. CTV does not currently have a de facto affiliate in that province, with most Newfoundlanders having to rely on cable and satellite, usually from CTV Atlantic, for its programming. In September 2005, CTV announced an agreement with MTV Networks that saw the launch of MTV Canada. In July 2006, CTV parent Bell Global Globe Media announced plans to acquire CHUM Limited, itself a former partner in CTV via ATV, and that and at that point one of Canada's largest broadcasters. Canada's largest broadcasters. While CTV Globe Media kept CHUM's radio stations along with the A-Channel television stations, with most of CHUM's specialty channels, the city TV stations were sold off to Rogers as, as required by the conditions of the CRTC placed upon CTV when approving the CHUM purchase. Bell Globe Media was renamed CTV Globe Media on January 1, 2007. In March 2009, CTV became the first Canadian television network to offer programming online in high definition. CTV affiliate CHFD in Thunder Bay, Ontario left the network on February 12, 2010 after being unable to reach an agreement on, on, on new affiliation terms. CHFD instead became a full-time global affiliate. CFTO was offered as part of the, pla of the basic package to Thunder Bay cable subscribers for the duration of the 2010 Winter Olympics. 
The station had otherwise been available only on the digital cable time-shifting package, leaving CTV without a presence on basic cable in the market. On September 10, 2010, BCE Incorporated announced it would purchase the remaining shares of CTV Globe Media for $1.3 billion. On April 1, 2011, CTV Globe Media was officially renamed Bell Media. On December 1, 2011, CJBN-TV in Kenora, Ontario dropped all CTV programming and became a full global station, adopting a schedule similar to nearby global station CKNDDT in Winnipeg. The move left CITL-DT in Lloydminster as the sole remaining CTV affiliate not owned by the network until 2014. It was announced in June 2014 that CKPRDT in Thunder Bay, Ontario would change affiliations from CBC to CTV on September 1st, 2014, resulting in Thunder Bay having a CTV affiliate again. On May 20th, 2015, Chorus Entertainment announced an agreement with Bell Media to switch its three CBC affiliates in Ontario to CTV. Checks DT Peterborough Chex TV2 Oshawa and CKWSDT Kingston. The affiliation switch went into effect in, on August 31st, 20, 2015. In the spring of 2020, CTV closed its Oak Street studio in North Bay, Ontario. And there's the history of CTV. How did it become so popular? Well, if you look at all the affiliates that CTV had over the years, and when they were merging with all these other uh, TV networks, that's how they became very popular. Anyways, this is where I'm going to end off this video. If you guys haven't enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Because I do videos every single day. And also, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell on my second channel. My second channel will be the third link in the room below. And if you guys would like to send me fan art or follow me on Instagram, my Instagram will be the second link in the description below. You guys and you guys can send me fan art on Instagram. My Instagram will be the second link in below. And if you guys would like to join my Roblox fan group, my Roblox fan group will be the first link in below. And if you guys would like to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter will be the fourth link in below. And if you guys would like to follow me on Reddit, my Reddit will be the fifth link in below. And if you guys would like to follow me on TikTok, my TikTok will be the sixth link in below. And if you guys would like to check out my Facebook page, my Facebook my Facebook page will be the seventh link in below. And until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.